Tonight's episode brought to you by the Cherries Deep Concealment Holster. Same holster I trained Keanu on for the John Wick franchise. Runs below the waistband. Never going to fall off you. Lightning fast draw with just a little bit of training. Uh, great. If you have to go hands-on, go to cherriescounterterror.com and carry with comfort and proper concealment. Tonight, bombshell report from the New York Post. According to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, the Biden administration actively interfered with Israel's ability to defend itself earlier this year, threatening to withhold weapons and leave Israel on its own if it launched a very critical military operation into Rafah. I know everybody remembers that one. But this one isn't just about politics. This one is about lives. Let me introduce to you Hirsch Goldberg Poland, one of the hostages who was brutally murdered by Hamas. Hirsch was a young man, had his entire life ahead of him, a huge heart, bright future, and a family who will now never see him come home. And Hirsch and many others would still be alive today, in my opinion, had Israel had not been delayed. Israel has one of the most elite hostage rescue units in the world, the Imam. These guys are the best of the best. They're a tier one asset. Uh, they're the ones who rescued Noah Argamani several months ago when Israel's military finally did act. It was the Imam who rescued Noah in that daring operation and got her back to her family while she was being held in Gaza. Have a look. <laughs> These operators live and breathe hostage rescue. They train for the worst case scenarios. They train for 360 degree uh, room clearing, which is extremely dangerous. That's all these guys do. And when they're called, they deliver. And had the imam been allowed to move in sooner without interference, Hirsch might have been rescued just like Noah. And the Biden administration's hesitation directly robbed this unit's ability to be able to do their job and bring more hostages home alive. And that's what I believe. Now, let's not sugarcoat this. Political games uh, and delays cost lives. And Rafa wasn't just another part of Gaza. This was the Hamas fortress. It was a hub for smuggling, terror cell activity, and likely where all of the hostages, including Hirsch, or a big chunk of them were being held in Netanyahu, who's a Seret Matkal veteran, speaks the language of the Middle East, understood or understands what's at stake. He shared that President Biden warned him directly in April, saying, you will be left alone. And Netanyahu's response, we'll do it alone. And the warnings didn't stop there. Netanyahu revealed that Secretary of State Antony Blinken visited Israel soon after and doubled down saying, you will not have weapons. Netanyahu's reply, we'll fight with our hands and our nails. And this is exactly the resolve of a leader who knows that survival cannot depend on the approval of others. Now, let's not forget that in Rafa, Israel eliminated Yehi Sinwar, the top terror leader behind the October 7th massacre, the architect, the murderer, the criminal. His death was a major blow to Hamas. But imagine how many more or how much more could have been achieved if Israel hadn't have been delayed. And how many more hostages, including Hirsch, could Israel have rescued if they had been given the green light sooner to act? The Biden administration's political games didn't just delay Israel. They cost lives. And for what? Optics? Political gain? Appeasing the radical left who has been taking over that party? 
They risked Israeli lives to appeal to a radical left progressive base and still lost the election. Netanyahu didn't cave. And when Biden repeatedly told him, you're going to be on your own, Netanyahu stood firm. We'll do it alone. And that's the kind of leadership that understands the stakes. And Netanyahu isn't just a politician. This guy's a veteran of Sayed Matkal, the General Staff Reconnaissance Unit, Israel's most elite IDF unit. And he knows how terrorists think and how they operate. And he knows that for every second wasted, another innocent person can be killed. And it gives Hamas time to relocate hostages, strengthen their defenses, and deepen their foothold in those Rafa tunnels. And when Secretary Blinken followed up by saying, you will not have weapons, Netanyahu replied, then we're going to fight with our hands and our nails. That's the kind of leadership you need to fight a terrorist organization like Hamas, which hides behind civilians and uses hostages as human shields. The cat's out of the bag. There's no more b There's no more secrets with this. That's exactly what this terror group does. And the world has now seen it. And let's not forget the operation itself. When Israel did finally move into Rafah, executed with extreme precision, one of the most extreme precise operations we've seen in modern history. And not only did they kill, Yehi Sinwar disrupted Hamas's leadership structure in a way that's going to take years for Hamas to recover from this. But let's ask the hard question. How many more lives could have been saved if Israel wasn't held back? How many more hostages could have been rescued if Israel hadn't been delayed? The civilian to combat casualty ratio by Israel is unmatched. And proof of Israel's professionalism and moral standards evident like no other military in modern history. Yet Biden's administration allowed Hamas's inflated casualty numbers to pressure Israel to appease that far left democratic whacked out base. Meanwhile, Hamas had more time to entrench, kill those hostages, and continues to use them as bargaining chips. Throughout the last year, I've been speaking to this pressure that Biden's been putting on Israel. Here's me with my old pal Larry Kudlow on Fox Business discussing this. As though the Israelis don't want to have precision. How many casualties? As though the Israelis really are uh, want to have more casualties. Of course they don't. And the whole thing's going to take a little longer. But that's what you've been telling us. They need to have intelligence to do the right job. I mean, I don't know. I ask this question again. When will they stop meddling? Just let the IDF do what it knows how to do and what it's going to do. Well, Larry, they're going to stop meddling uh, once they realize that the, uh, the thicker the handcuffs they put on Israel and the longer it takes for Israel to uh, destroy Hamas, I mean physically and ideologically, uh, the sooner uh, it's going to affect U.S. national security. And what I mean by that is the longer it takes for Israel to uh, topple Hamas, the more the craziness is going to continue to build here in the United States, and I'm going to talk and I'm going to cut back to what uh, FBI Director Christopher Wright said. He has not seen this level of threat mm. since 9-11. Since mm. And you can see from that conversation just how critical it is to call out that Biden administration's dangerous hesitation. Leadership matters. And in moments like these, every second counts. And when Israel's held back, lives were lost. And when boots are on the ground, pressure creates diamonds. The death of Sinwar and Rafa was a milestone, but that delay meant that Hamas was able to consolidate and inflict more suffering, and it's a tragedy that could have been avoided. If you guys are a fan of my work, uh, do me a favor, become a season one sponsor. They start at about $25. Hit the link at the description in this video and grab yourself a mini sponsorship kit. Every dime helps, and help me continue to combat that anti-Israel misinformation. Now let's take a moment to imagine what future operations are going to look like against these terror proxies now that Trump is back in office and is Israel's unwavering ally. 
Under Trump, U.S.-Israel relations were stronger than ever, and that was based on a mutual respect and a shared commitment to eradicating terrorism through maximum pressure and by not allowing Iran to be the bulldog of the Middle East. Trump didn't hesitate. He supported Israel's military operations with zero interference, recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital, and took out Qasem Soleimani a key Iranian terror mastermind. And Soleimani's death sent a very strong message to Iran and to its proxies. Their games in the Middle East wouldn't be tolerated. And for Israel, this partnership means a green light to act quickly as it gathers intelligence and when lives are on the line because that's how counterterrorism works. As soon as you get that intel, you're out the door. And it means better intelligence sharing, faster action and coordination, and fewer political BS roadblocks allowing boots on the ground to deploy when and where they're needed most. And for U.S. national security, the benefits are also enormous. Iran and its proxies, Hezbollah, the IRGC, the Houthis, they don't just threaten Israel. They threaten U.S. interests and allies across the globe. And a strong U.S.-Israel alliance deters Iranian aggression and cripples its proxies before they can export terror here to American soil. So this partnership not only strengthens Israel, but also strengthens U.S. national security as well. And I believe that Trump and Israel are going to redefine what these counterterror operations are going to look like moving forward in this modern, uh, in this next chapter. And providing that strength and unity, uh, it's going to be a very effective weapon against terrorism. Before I close... I want to thank the Cherry's Deep Concealment Holster for sponsoring this episode. Same holster I trained Keanu on for the John Wick franchise. Runs below the waistband. Never going to fall off you. Zero digging into your gut. Uh, lightning fast draw with just a little bit of training. Go to cherryscounterterror.com. Grab yourselves one of these bad boys. It is an absolute beast. And do me a favor. This show depends on viewers like you guys. If you value and support the work that I'm doing here, combating that anti-Israel misinformation garbage, uh, do me a favor. Help support the show. Hit the link in the description of this video. Grab yourself one of those mini sponsorship packages. Helps keep the lights on in the studio. I want to thank you guys for watching The Aaron Cohen Show. Stay informed. Stay vigilant. Stay trained. And remember... True allies stand together shoulder to shoulder like Trump and BB, no matter how tough it gets. Appreciate you guys watching, and I will catch you on the next one.